Alafia, aho, ase, namaste, and blessings to all. Welcome to Shadow of Wolves. Today being August 4th, 2023. Let's get a lot of, get and give a lot of praises for the blessing of being able to stand on Mother Earth to those who are on the other side and blessings to you that your spirits are free and you have the ashe of freedom. Now, in moving right along, I had a very good friend of mine ask me and she also makes comments on my YouTube page. So please follow me on YouTube at Shadow of Wolves, Shadow of Wolves 777 or simply Shadow of Wolves. Now, she asked me a very, very important question. She said, how do we recognize the different colors when we're speaking about Madamas, Franciscas, and so forth? I'm standing here because those who know me know I love plants. These are real plants. You have Madamas and Franciscas that came in from Africa and traveled to the Caribbean, whether it be Haiti, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Trinidad, Barbados, Colombia, and so forth, Honduras, you name it. When they came in, even here to the Americas, these madamas had specialties. They were medicine women. Sadly, a lot of them were forced to bre breastfeed and to care for the slave master's child opposed to their own. However, let's stick to the fact of spirituality. They were medicine women. So some of them were also shamans. A lot of them had native, we say Native American, these days it's indigenous blood, okay? So through that indigenous blood, they learned to, to work the land and dealing with flowers and plants. If you look at the movie, for example, Underground by John Legend, you will notice and you will see that she used, um, there was one point where they used um, a certain kind of plant. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on here because I don't want TikTok to ban me, but that particular plant caused delirium and it still exists today, okay? There's different plants that work with different energies. So some Madamas in their colors we're now opening, to, they had green and white, or they had multicolor African garbs, which was absolutely beautiful. That's how you would know when you go to someone's house, that particular madama is a spiritual energy. It could be a doll, it could be a portrait. Usually it's a doll that has the secrets, but that particular madama is the madama that works with that particular energy. So you also had some madamas that were that of Shango Baptist. They worked with a lot of fire energies and they did a lot of readings and consultations in working with fires. They also fire. They also worked with magic stones and piedra de rayo and so forth. They knew how to work with um, citrines and so forth. Okay, then you have the other madamas with that, with that of the water and the lake and so forth. And they worked with those energies. Those madamas they had naturally blue and white they were they some of them could have also listen carefully some of them could have also been crowned in Ocha so some of these madamas in particular they could have once been a child of Yemaya and they want to be reborn and so forth and them being reborn um, into this world and being in reincarnated they come back as either they they don't have to be children of yamaya but they choose someone and say you know what i want this spiritualist to take care of me and they were once crowned yamaya do you understand do you get it some madamas and some spirits that come back and decide to come back sometimes were crowned a particular orisha or simply they were medicine men and women so for example I have my godson's partner whose main spirit guide, it's not always a madama or they don't have to have a madama, but guess what? He has an indigenous spirit. That indigenous spirit comes from the hills and the mountains of Peru. 
That is his main spirit guide. So we can't just normally just stick to, oh, this is everybody got a Madama. Not everybody got a Madama, man. People got different spirits that walk with them. And we need to respect those different spirits. So in understanding that, say for example, you have one that it was a powerful shaman that just walked within the earth and was a hunter and that could smell and do his tracking or her tracking on earth. That's another indigenous spirit. But I am answering the question of the Madamas. Now let's go over the beautiful Madamas that have nine colors in blessing and rest in peace. The Madamas that have nine colors is one that I identified in a Misa. When the, and it so happened that that person's mother ended up being Oya, not the crown. So in looking at that and looking at the spiritual energy of these Madamas, the one that wears nine colors is normally the Madama of the seven African powers, okay? That Madama works with the different forces of nature, the different forces of tornado and wind energy and so forth. She is able to change. Some Madamas, by the way, some Madamas are able to manifest where one day you can go to someone's house and that spirit is is prepared through the vessel of a doll and you'll say wait a minute i thought i saw her wearing red and white now she's wearing nine colors that's because we don't just do this and invent this please that is because either their godmother their spiritual leader they had many misas um they had many prayer masses it was manifested that that particular madama is required to change so what is a madama a madama is a spiritual energy of a francisca that came through the waters and through the slave trade and brought secrets from africa with her she was a healer and a medicine woman she is the one who took care of everyone whether they were chinese black white japanese puerto rican taino she did it she did her job to save children and she was a shaman. A lot of them, once again, had indigenous blood. People don't know this until they start studying and that Madama manifests itself. What I often tell my godchildren or those of my clients that I guide spiritually is please take your time. The more spirits that you gotta, you find out that you got, the more you gotta work with them. Hello, you owe them because they showed up in a reading. So please, take your time for example i didn't know certain spirits that were in my court until oh my god some of them even eight and ten years later and i'm in no in no rush and why am i in no rush because you know what when you are within yourself very happy and 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 bad times can happen, good times can happen, but when you're content with what you have, even if you have one or two spirits with you, have faith that those spirits are powerful enough, be it that they're your own parents, that are your angels, they are walking with you. Why are you looking for anything else if necessary? Look for them little by little. There were certain spirits I had to confirm over and over again to say, okay, this one is in my court. Oh, that one is in my court. Oh, this one? Okay. Little by little. Because why? Some people get misguided and they start serving them like they're alive, giving them human energy and human food. You know, a spirit, an angel, they, fairies, they are already charged. Spirits that, were once, that once walked this earth do need recognition and prayers like the movie Coco. Yeah, that's true. They should have light and they should have prayers, but constantly meals and giving meals and meals. We eat to rely on human energy for fuel, for food. We eat for that reason. Spirits need light and prayers and not constantly, constantly giving them food because they maintain being earthbound. We are trying to move through the matrix system as we are lowercase gods and goddesses within our ourselves but we cannot be arrogant and not recognize that there is a God that manifests that has created everything so remember that and take care of yourself and take time little by little in Paolo they say cheque by cheque and blessings to all alafia aho I say namaste and thank you for watching shadow of wolves stay calm and sweet